Hello again. I want to tell you about a new component that has landed in Node.js. It's called LLHTTP. It is currently an experimental component, but it's intended to replace HTTP parser, which has been around in Node for a very long time. So I'm going to tell you a bit about this new project, but first we're going to have a quick history lesson about Node's HTTP parser. At the beginning of Node, actually before the beginning of Node in 2008, Ryan Dahl was experimenting with an HTTP server library called libebb, which he wrote in C. Now it's still available on the web. You can find it um, if you search around. He seems to have removed his original, but there are forks around. So such as this one I found on GitHub libebb, and his website still has reference to it as well. Now libebb was written in 2008, and it formed the one of the initial components of Node.js. So the, if you look back to the very first commit of Node.js, it's the introduction, it's the introduction of two submodules, libebb and another library which was used, which he was using for evented IO, and that was the beginning of Node.js. He obviously decided that uh, it need, it could have evolved after some experimentation with it, and he started HTTP parser in April 2009. Now, if you look in uh, on the Node.js org on GitHub, you will find the HTTP parser project. And I've got the first commit of it here, and you can see that he's doing some refactoring of the original EBB ideas, um, and he created the HTTP parser project. Now, that landed in Node.js in... Um, May, early May of 2009, it replaced libebb completely um, and he began introducing some new ideas about how to do HTTP. Not long after that, later that month in fact, later May, Node.js 001 was released uh, so and that had an HTTP parser in it and it has been with us since that day. Okay, so what is HTTP parser other than obviously an, a parser of HTTP messages? Well, it's a new generation HTTP processing library. It's similar to what Nginx does in that it, it does minimal state retention, no buffering. It is designed for node streaming and event-driven model. It is designed to be very lightweight. It doesn't retain anything, it doesn't bloat. It just receives messages, splits them up, passes them, and passes on what it can as soon as it can. So very minimal memory usage and very efficient in terms of data flowing through it and coming through. So it served node very well as its HTTP parsing library. Unfortunately, it's showing its age. It's been a while now, it's nearly nearly 10 years old. Uh, it'll be coming up to that next year. If we look at the changes to HTTP parser over the last few years, we can see that a lot of the commits are security related. Um, I've done a few security releases in, the, releases in the last two years that have included fixes to HTTP parser. Just small things like parsing headers wrong, not reading content length quite right, in interpreting spaces wrong, little things that can be used um, to create minor security vulnerabilities, sometimes major. It hasn't been a great journey with HTTP parser. Introducing new features was always difficult and error prone, just introducing new or just updating it to work with HTTP 1.1 as the spec says and as people were extending it with things like WebSockets. It's a, it, it's a brittle piece of software, so people don't tend to go near it unless they have to. Attempts to improve the code base have all failed. Well, a bunch of people have tried refactoring and improving it, but now people mostly just don't touch it except for minor patches where we need to. So it's like that thing in the corner that you just leave. There was an interesting attempt in 2015 by Brian White. I'll show you here. This is pull request number 1457 on the Node.js repo. This was back in early IOJS time, so it was not long after the IOJS 1.00 release. Brian White, I don't know if he was the, I don't think he was the first one to try this, but he came up with an HTTP parser in JavaScript. Um, this was discussed for a while. I remember discussions going back and forth about whether we should have, we should do it in JavaScript or in C and what's going to be more efficient. One of the things that we will find, you find about um, anything that um, where data is passing from the outside into no, into your JavaScript is that the barrier between the native layer and your JavaScript is one of the most costly parts of Node. So the idea here was to pull more, more of that work up into JavaScript and you could potentially do it more efficient. This effort stalled, but the interesting thing to note is benchmarks suggested that um, it could offer quite a gain. Now, 
some people did some fiddling with this and came up with some different numbers, but um, potentially up to 200% faster in some cases. But, you know, it's, it's very hard to know what these, what these are like in the real world. But uh, this was an interesting experiment that stalled and didn't quite make it in. It's one of these really big things that everyone's scared to sort of pull the trigger on because it means changing a lot of stuff that everyone's got used to and potentially introducing new edge cases. I think Brian just ran out of steam with this, and um, if he uh, if he had it persisted, it may have got in. But um, it sits there now. It would be interesting to have that as a user land library. Maybe it is. Moving on, enter LLHTTP, this new component that has just landed this month in the Node.js code base. Fedor in Dutney created this project called LLParse. It's a JavaScript library that can generate parses in C or LLVM bytecode. Uh, which is a really interesting thing to do. Um, but you can actually look at LL Pars on his GitHub and you can see some examples where you can use it to create parses. You can see that the example that he's put here is HTTP parsing. He used LL Pars to create LLHTTP. LLHTTP is actually written in TypeScript. So he wrote LLHTTP in TypeScript. It uses LL Pars to compile down into C code. And that's where we get this replacement to HTTP parser. Now, his benchmark suggests that um, he could get significant speed ups if you look at the, um, the C to the HTTP parser version. Uh, if you are doing raw processing, then at least double speed. This is in isolation if you were just pumping data from, you know, from outside and then measuring on the other side doesn't reflect what we could do in Node.js. It's purely what can this code do? by itself. Fedor introduced this into Node.js earlier this month in uh, pull request number 24059. Uh, now this landed surprisingly quickly because a lot of people are very enthusiastic about uh, the idea of getting rid of HTTP parser. You can quickly look down here, there's not a huge amount of discussion, there was some back and forth, we got the some of the right, but um, Fedor is such an amazing programmer that there's very, usually very little wrong with his code and you know, it's always much more advanced than many of us could pull off. So uh, it's it's a happy times reviewing his, his code. You'll note that uh, Ryan showed up and uh, bid goodbye to old friend HTTP parser. <laughs> so end of an era, 10 years later. Now it was landed in Node under the experimental HTTP parser configure flag. So this is an experimental feature. It doesn't get rid of HTTP parser. The way it was landed was so that it could sit beside HTTP parser and could be switched at compile time with this experimental HTTP parser flag. Now, some benchmarks were done on it uh, as it was landed, when it was landed, and they don't show a particularly impressive change. In fact, you could average out to about 0% change. So the speed is roughly the same. Now that might be surprising given that his raw benchmarks were showing at least twice the speed. But the reason for that is that as I said earlier, the biggest cost in node moving data around is moving between the C and JavaScript layer. So when you move from the native into V8, you have to do this boundary hopping thing, and there's a significant cost in that. So there's always, it's always best if you can keep things in JavaScript, but when things come from outside and you need to process data and then pass it up into JavaScript, there's a cost you incur. That's a barrier for node that has always been a problem. It's, it's one of the problems with doing crypto um, TLS in Node um, is that barrier you have to cross all the time. So the less you can do it, the better. But unfortunately, HTTP parsing is one of those things where the data is still coming from the outside, whether you process it in Node in, in JavaScript or not. There's still a cost to incur. It's just a matter of figuring out what the best where the best place to do exactly which bit of it is. So unfortunately, we don't get a massive speed improvement here, but um, there's potential there's potential here to do something even more impressive. Now it's queued for release in node 11.2.0. Ruben Bridgewater has a pull request up for this version. It, it may go out, I'm not sure when he intends to release this, but uh, I would expect probably next week it'll go out. Um, and it has this, it has 8 LLHTP HTTP in it. The release note should say that it's behind a compile flag. So you don't get it automatically, but it is in the code base if you want to try it. I might produce some test builds if um, if folks want to have a download and play with it because that would be really interesting to to get some feedbacks from folks about it. I might just show you that on my terminal. If I go into the node master code base and configure, look at all the configure options, you'll see there is this experimental HTTP parser. So if you configure 
experimental HTTP parser, then your build as coming out of that will have LLHTTP instead of HTTP parser. Now there's no firm timeline for replacing HTTP parser yet. This needs to go through some proving time to for people to experiment with it and make sure that uh, we're comfortable that it doesn't introduce more problems than it solves. The aim with this thing is to get something into Node that is much more maintainable, much more stable and much more secure. Uh, we're still to figure out if, if that's the case, but the process by which Fedora has built this thing uh, is quite impressive and should lend itself to all of those three things. I imagine there will be a time to iron out any bugs, figure out what the edge cases are. The node test suite is big, but it's it's by no means comprehensive. It's very far from comprehensive. So we will need to get this into people's hands and get them to try it in, on real code before we're much more comfortable shipping this as default. But this is uh, end of an era for HTTP parser, I suspect, and LLHTP will be the de facto node parser in the near future.